what's the what's the coaching carousel gonna look like? Urban to College Station. Oh, please. I tell you what, if we've got a program Ooh. that just has dysfunction, the D in DNA stands for dysfunction at Texas <laughs> A&M. And if we can just introduce some Urban Meyer to the equation, woo! <laughs> yes, yeah, content for days, baby. Let's go. <laughs> um, what from week two or week one and week two? What are some other uh, potential, you know, hot seat coaching carousel type situations that uh, that might be popping up? We mentioned it briefly on Saturday night, but Dana's hot seat is scorching right now. It has to be. He, they lost to Rice. There's just no other way to describe that other than you are in serious trouble. I, I think Neil Brown has a chance this weekend in the backyard brawl to to make his seat about as cold as possible. Like, I don't know that West Virginia really has the money to fire him. And if, if like, I thought they showed well against Penn State. I know, I know they didn't even cover, but like, Relative to the kind of talent you can get at West Virginia with, with their NIL situation right now, um, how that roster got plucked over, I, I I think they showed well. If they can beat Pitt, they can beat Pitt. Yeah, yeah. Pitt, Pitt looked terrible. So, speaking of which, upon further review, Bub means eleven targets, zero catches. They're not really in sync right there on offensive Pitt uh, right now, as that stat I think shows. So, um, what Pitt? Is all about you know the way that that program has been built out is you we're going to win at the line of scrimmage and and we're going to be able to to run the football and stop the run. They allowed uh, five sacks and eight tackles for loss against Cincinnati and Cincinnati is it Kiner is that his name right Corey running Kiner? back yeah the yeah, running back man. goes for a buck twenty three on like eighteen carries Cincinnati went into an AFC North battle in the big old mustard bottle. And whooped up on Pitt at the line of scrimmage, causing all kind of problems for the. I mean, it was. I I came out of that one, yes, with big notes for Pitt, but also my my reckless assumption that Cincinnati was going to be the worst team in the Big Twelve. I thought that was an impressive win. I to be able to go in there and beat Pitt at their own game. That was that was strong stuff from the Bearcats right there. Who is Pitt's quarterback? Uh, Phil Jerkovic. Where'd he come from? Uh, Boston College. Is Jeff Halfley still coaching Boston College in October? Uh, I don't know about October, but not 2023. Because this is a team that started off the season with a three-point loss to Northern Illinois, which then went and lost to Southern Illinois on Saturday. And no, while not- at the same time, Boston College was beating Holy Cross, whipping their ass 31-28. to They've got Florida State coming to town this weekend. After that, they're going on the road to Louisville. This is a team staring Owen Ford dead in the face. Is BC the type to do the midseason firing? I don't know. I don't know. But Maybe not, but uh, I they mean, definitely will after. Yeah, it does just I does mean, Holy Cross having players just were trash talking. Holy Cross players were trash talking after a loss. Mm-hmm. They were like, we didn't even belong on the field and we almost beat you. They supposed to be ACC. <laughs> um, Jeff says, when do we start talking about Dave Aranda's seat being hot? Now? Sure. Right? <laughs> I mean, like, it seems like you have the game won, then Robertson throws a really, really bad interception. Mm-hmm. You know, Utah is able to score a couple times late and kind of steal that win, but... 0-2 with losses to Texas State and a blown lead to Utah and not a lot of signs that this Baylor team like I is going to be able to be like Baylor against Cincinnati. Overreaction is I would probably take Cincinnati to win that football game. It's mm. on the road. Uh, yeah, it's never- they get Long Island this weekend. A Texas. loss to Texas is obviously pretty excusable because you don't really expect to beat a, a good Texas team. I think the good thing for Baylor is like AM lost and Texas Tech is 0 and 2. We don't really see a lot of cactus emojis on, on, on Twitter right now. And TCU looks like a dumpster fire. So the non Texas programs in that state right now in the Power Five have not looked very good. Um, so and SMU lost, obviously, to Oklahoma. There's really no, no shame in that. They get UCF next. I don't know if you guys saw this, but right before UCF kicked that field goal, uh, John Rice Plumley was yeah, tackled. Right. Really, yeah. 
and like watch him limp like crazy on the final two handoffs. Like he can't move. And I, I know they're going to make some kind of announcement or further uh, update today, but I think there's a non-zero chance that you're going to get to play UCF without, uh, but his throwing arms fine. So who cares? Well, I might, (laughs) uh, have two picks in that game too. (laughs) Iowa state looks terrible. Obviously. Um, I mean, you get Houston at home. I mean, they could, they could be like five and three to start the year, just on. Schedule. I would bet against that. Me too. Yeah, I. It, that is them playing, maybe not to peak efficiency, but at least to something that is expected. And I think that this is going to be a team that performs below expectations. Based will, on when did they get shaping back? Three. It was supposed three to be weeks. three or four weeks. Yeah. I will say, I know he mentioned it, but like, seriously, shout out to Neil Brown in that we were already firing him all off season. And now we're in the second week of the season. And it's like, is he even on the hottest seat in the big 12 anymore? No, he's not even on like the <laughs> second <laughs> hottest seat in the yeah. big 12 anymore. <laughs> Good for you, Neil Brown, Brown out here. Neil Brown, big winner. Come on the cover three podcast. So you can celebrate with us. Coach <laughs> of the month nomination for the month of September. Um, all right. What else do we want to have uh, upon further review? Where, where do y'all want to turn the attention? Uh, I, we, we just touched on a little bit. I finally had a chance to go see what happened during that Utah Baylor game while I was in HQ that I missed everything that happened. And that was wild. I also, I wanted, cause I paid, I, I had planned to pay more attention to this game on Saturday because it was so terrible, but I didn't really, I, I, I watched Northwestern Utah <laughs> and, uh, Northwestern explosive offense, explosive, like. Let's see. The, they had the plays of 85-yard touchdown that I think was a, you know, maybe a, a yard behind the line of scrimmage. But still, it was like they were busted out big plays. It was very good. It was a very good sign for Northwestern, considering how terrible they looked against Rutgers. They did not look that bad against UTEP. So, there we go. An upgrade for Northwestern, a downgrade for UTEP coming out of that game. Classic two-way adjustments. <laughs> 